please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lila, very much. Um, so I'm really glad to see you all, you guys. Uh, it's really nice to see uh, such huge amount of people here. And um, in the next 30 minutes, I believe we will go through uh, really interesting topics for me. It's a next generation frameworks for developing microservices using Java, of course, uh, because why would we here be here? Um, let's go through the agenda as it is. Um, so first of all, we are going to uh, revise some basic principles of microservices and uh, why there is need for frameworks at all. Uh, then problem definition and the reason why we all gathered here. Um, the next would be what's wrong with Spring framework and why it's not always the appropriate uh, solution, the appropriate framework for all the microservices. Uh, the next would be Micronaut framework. Uh, some uh, also very interesting as for me, uh, community specification called MicroProfile and uh, two of really a lot implementations of this specification. Uh, this, uh, I mean, Quarkus framework and Oracle Helidon framework. Uh, the next would be small hands-on on Micronaut. Uh, Micronaut isn't an uh, implementation of mentioned uh, community specification, but it's really, really a uh, nice framework as I see it. And uh, I think everyone would find it uh, interesting, interactive and uh, productive. Uh, so let's start really. Uh, so microservices, really microservices uh, with no doubt revolutionized how we design and develop applications. So instead of building huge monolithic applications, uh, where everything really, really tightly coupled, we can just split into small ones. And uh, uh, so it really advocates for decentralized approach uh, where each microservice is a small autonomous service and uh, it's really responsible for a specific piece of functionality. Uh, so let's, let's revise the core principles. Uh, as I said, single responsibility, of course, uh, each microservice should focus on some specific business function capability, and uh, it really helps to maintain a clear separation of concerns, and uh, it's easier to develop, test, deploy. In most cases, I know some of you may argue this. Uh, the next would be loose coupling. Of course, uh, in short words, it means that uh, changes in one service should not require changes in another microservice. So this can be achieved by many ways, but uh, for example, well-defined micro uh, interfaces, right? And communication protocols, it, it really helps uh, for make our microservices uh, loosely coupled. Uh, high cohesion. Uh, high cohesion really compl complements the single responsibility principle, and uh, it means that uh, all functionalities uh, that encapsulate the microservice should be closely related. Uh, so the same single responsibility principle in other words, uh, with a little more deep meaning. Uh, the next would be fault isolation and resilience. Uh, also, we can add here uh, fault tolerance, for example. And it means that a failure in one service should not uh, cascade to another services. And uh, it can be achieved by implementing, for example, resilience patterns. Uh, there are a lot of them. One of them is circuit breakers, for example, uh, etc. cetera. But uh, that's not really why we are here. And scalability. Um, of course, sometimes we would like to scale some specific feature, uh, as I mentioned from uh, previous principles that uh, if one of the services is really responsible for something small, something important for application, yeah, uh, this 
scalability principle. It also can be scaled in, uh, it would be really nice to have it scaled in runtime, uh, depending on the demand and to uh, some load, etc. cetera. Uh, so personally, I, I do not see, I cannot see microservices without those principles. There are some of them and uh, depending on the abstraction level, etc. But uh, as I said, that's not why we are here. Uh, on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, the approximate view of the Netflix microservice infrastructure. And uh, as you may imagine, it's uh, how essential it is to keep uh, each of these microservices as, uh, uh, as efficient as it is. So the framework, which requires no introduction. Uh, it's a beloved Spring framework, and uh, it's really a cornerstone in Java development, and it's been there for years, and it has extensive ecosystem, provides really uh, everything you need to build a robust, scalable, scalable application. And uh, it really simplifies the microservice development. I believe most of, or of, the, most of the developers started from this. And uh, essentially, you have everything to build a microservice for, uh, in Spring Framework. Uh, but there got to be something wrong with it, isn't it? Uh, because we wouldn't be here listening to me. And uh, I really felt it one day. It was a really late Friday evening. Uh, I finished my eight hours working day. And uh, I've just been waiting for the code to build. I also needed to, to be pushed uh, to CI CD. And it really took forever for me uh, like to go to went through all those steps. And that's exactly the first item of my really provocative list called what's wrong with Spring Framework. And uh, the first item, as I said, it's really longer build deployment and start type times. So sorry. Mm. So as I said, Spring Boot uh, applications typically have longer startup times. And why is so really? Uh, because of, first of all, of really huge class pass scanning, uh, annotation processing, and the sort is dependency injection. The interesting part is that all of the listed occurs at runtime. And this can be a huge disadvantage in environments that required, for example, rapid scaling of frequent redeployment, uh, et cetera. And uh, that's it. Um, the second would be heavy resource consumption. Uh, the next level after building deployment, after startup time, uh, Spring Boot frameworks really tends to show uh, more resource consumption in average, uh, comparing again with uh, other frameworks uh, to what we uh, we will go back uh, later. Um, so there are environments where this is really essential. For example, cloud environments where we are being built based on uh, resource consumption. Uh, so let's move on to reflection and prophecies overhead. Um, this may be one of the important really points from my perspective. Uh, reflection is really a head pain um, in many cases. One of them, for example, in migration from different versions of uh, frameworks, etc. For example, many uh, reflection code was. Uh, been moved or deleted uh, after some Java versions, etc. And uh, the most interesting part about Java reflection is that Java really tried to expose the properties, methods, events, uh, for example, over Bean, if we are talking about Spring Framework. Um, and uh, for example, if you would like to introspect a single Bean method, yeah, and it contains some other instances, 
uh, variables are links to different uh, another beings. Uh, you can imagine the overhead of introspection of one single being. Um, and all, really, all of them, we need to store some somewhere. And it's being stored in Kashi, as you know, and uh, it, it's released with garbage collector, uh, which isn't consistent, by the way. And sometimes garbage collector just fails to clear the memory for some reason. Uh, and uh, then memory consumption really uh, increase and we slow down the application. Um, let's move on. A lack of native image support. Uh, yeah, really, first of all, let's take a look what is native image uh, itself. Uh, as the quote said, it's just a Java technology, by the way, uh, to compile Java code ahead of time. Uh, so as a result, we, uh, we get a binary, a native executable file, which can be uh, really, really efficient in uh, uh, all the classes, all the information it, contain, it, it contains. Uh, as the quote said, uh, only those which are required at runtime and uh, application classes, standard libraries, language runtime, and uh, some linked uh, native code. And uh, why it's a base, best choice uh, rather than using jar or virus files, uh, it uses just a fraction of the resources required by GVM. Uh, so it's really cheaper to run. It starts in milliseconds. Uh, we will see it in a, in my demo live coding session that it indeed starts in milliseconds. Uh, it delivers peak performance immediately. No warm up time can be packaged, uh, by the way, into next level containers like Docker. Uh, Alpine, some really small image. Uh, and it really presents a reduced attack surface because we have a uh, lower amount of classes, items, files. And uh, so it's like a principle that you must contain in the image only those piece of uh, data that you need, that you will, will use, and not the whole uh, like libraries, not all the jars. Um, so move on. Um, as I said, by the way, a couple of words about Spring Boot and native Im image support that, uh, uh, as I marked with the asterisks, that uh, Spring Boot really announced the support of Graal VM. But as I said, Spring Boot really relies on uh, reflection which happens in at runtime. And you can imagine what the mess would be using the uh, uh, runtime reflection in some uh, native images. So because of that, it's not uh, fully supported. Uh, and in case of Spring Boot, you would need to uh, really refactor your code, uh, remove reflection, remove a lot of uh, features uh, just to compile the native image. Um, so let's let's move on to the interesting part. Uh, so some time ago, guys from different uh, companies thought that there are a lot of different approaches to developing microservices, a lot of frameworks, a lot of uh, patterns, etc., and they said that it can be a problem. So, uh, like corporate guys thought that it would be nice to come up with a community specification for uh, microservice development using Java, and uh, that's the same specification uh, as a JPA, for example, Java Persistence API, uh, or something like that, but in more higher level. Uh, as Hibernet is an implementation for GPA, uh, very the same. Uh, for example, uh, Halidon or uh, Quarks is an implementation of MicroProfile. 
uh, community specification. Um, and uh, then the question who, is, who are responsible for that uh, specification and uh, there is such a definition as a working group and uh, a lot of companies really contribute to the uh, uh, this community specification and uh, some of the uh, some of those companies uh, come up with their implementations of the uh, specification and uh, as a uh, uh, Halidon by Oracle, uh, Quarkus, uh, Tommy is really nice framework, uh, etc. We will go through only some of them in this lecture. Oh, sorry, links. Um, so, what is MicroProfile? Uh, the latest version of MicroProfile contains uh, a lot of specifications for different features and parts, which are considered to be required in every microservice uh, as telemetry, fault tolerance, uh, conf config, uh, con configurations, uh, API, uh, REST clients, etc. even authorization. So um, that's a huge, that's a huge piece of uh, uh, really, uh, description yeah of any type of microservice you would need and uh, there is even a micro profile star starter uh really handy site where you can just put uh, like a spin initializer or micronaut launch uh, choose whatever you need press the load button uh, you choose the uh, implementation of the uh, a specification you need and to uh, just ha have a really nice microservice right away. Um, uh, sorry, also. Um, yep, I'm really ahead of my uh, uh, script. Okay. Um, for example, talking about uh, the micro profile in general. Uh, from the very first version, they had an idea that it should contain uh, implementation like extension of uh, already existing uh, uh, conventions you know, for, for in, uh, conventions for implementing microservices, implementing Java code, uh, already existing specifications. And there is a CDI. Uh, that's a really basic one. CDI is a, a specification for context and dependency injection. So every implementation of MicroProfile will have a uh, out of the box solution for dependency injection, bin life cycles, producers, interceptors, uh, observers, etc. cetera. Uh, also it implements, like it extends the JAX RS specification, uh, which means that Every implementation will have RESTful web services annotation based uh, right away, HTTP centric, etc. So you can imagine the implementations of this specification, like it's huge, really. Um, but but it's huge with features, but at the same time, all of them uh, mostly support native image uh, building. It means that you will have only those features you need packed really tautly in some uh, native executable. One of the implementation, as I said, it's a Quarkus framework. Uh, it's really a nice framework. It's designed to be Kubernetes native. Uh, only Java stack tailored, really, um, with the support of Graal, Graal VM, native image building, uh, also OpenGK hotspot, uh, if someone worked, really nice tool. Uh, and the goal is to make Java uh, really a leading uh, language in developing serverless environments uh, with Kubernetes, of course. So 
it's really efficient. Uh, exactly this slide was taken from uh, the official site. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, building Quarkus as a native image, uh, comparing with a traditional cloud native stack, it's almost, uh, it's even more than 10 times efficient in uh, memory. Uh, also in uh, FRST, first, uh, first response time, uh, it takes just milliseconds uh, like to be up and ready. So uh, just, you can see the efficiency, let's move on. Uh, there are downsides, downsides, of course. Uh, it's young, and uh, it doesn't have a, such huge ecosystem as Spring Boot. And, uh, but it's rapidly growing, and uh, with a growing ecosystem, community also try to keep up uh, with this. And uh, as a result, we have a lot of third-party integrations, uh, community support, etc. Not a Spring Boot, but at the same time, uh, it's a compromise. Um, also, there is a really interesting feature like a live coding feature uh, for uh, Quarkus, something I didn't see in uh, Spring Framework. Uh, it's flexible, as I said, with different integrations. Uh, uh, it has integrations for different uh, uh, paradigm of programming, like imperative or reactive programming models. Uh, yeah, also easy to integrate to Oracle ecosystem, but uh, that's something they have in common. Uh, so we are running off time, so let's move to Helidon framework. Uh, Helidon framework have a lot of interesting features. Most of them are really uh, uh, repeat the features of MicroProfile itself and uh, of Quarkus, uh, because as I said, it's an implementation of specification. Uh, but there are something uh, different. For example, there is uh, two different distributions of Caledon. Uh, Caledon SE is a lightweight and reactive. Uh, SE stands for standard edition. So it's a micro framework. This is uh, all about being a lightweight and fast, and it's built uh, around a reactive programming model. Um, and it means that it uh, it um, can excel at handling a large number of concurrent requests with minimal resource consumption. Uh, that's something all reactives have in common. Uh, and also in Helidon SE, uh, as a downside, reactive programming model is uh, not not as easy. Have a really steep uh, learning curve, uh, and uh, it also can lead to highly maintainable and performant code. So it's a downside. Uh, okay, the second distribution model it's Halidon MP Enterprise Gradle and Familiar, and especially Haladon MP, it's an implementation of MicroProfile edition. Uh, because of that, it's called MP. Uh, so if something, uh, if someone willing to migrate from uh, Java Enterprise Edition, yeah, uh, and it has a Spring background, uh, then Haladon MP would be really the best choice. Uh, it implements the Eclipse microprofile, as I said, and it's at the same time, it, it uh, extends the Java E for microservices architecture. So uh, you had, you're having almost the same code, the same annotations, uh, etc. cetera, but uh, really highly performative uh, framework. Um, okay. About talking about performance, I believe uh, numbers uh, are talking instead of me. And uh, Eladon is as performant as uh, any micro uh, micro profile based frameworks. Um, so 
when would you really want to use uh, the Halidon? So it's highly reactive systems uh, and a seamless Oracle integration. Uh, as I said, it's a uh, framework developed by Oracle uh, and uh, it really supports uh, ready to use Oracle, uh, Oracle integrations and all the benefits of MicroProfile, uh, which were announced. And uh, the next one, and the last one, before the code hands, uh, has, uh, hands on, uh, it's a Micronaut framework. It's really special uh, comparing to all of the previous, because it doesn't implement the micro profile, but at the same time, it's like uh, having your hands on tie. And uh, the main idea was just to make the microservice as fast as possible, even compromising the uh, uh, development time. Uh, however, development time is, is quite fast at the same time. Um, maybe compromising the compilation time because of the mentioned reasons with ahead of time compilation. So compilation takes uh, takes longer compared to usual uh, frameworks, but uh, you will see the numbers uh, with the features of uh, Micronaft. Uh, it supports different programming languages, not only uh, Java, but also Kotlin and uh, Groovy uh, and even Scala. Yeah, it's uh, cloud native, uh, supports aspect oriented uh, API, uh, ahead of time compilation, as I said, uh, easy to learn. Uh, I really learned uh, some basic features of Micronaft just in a day. It's really uh, uh, user friendly for those who uh, had experience with Spring Boot at least. Um, and to, really fast and easy for unit testing. I will show you uh, in a moment. Um, as, I, as I said, really uh, fast performance, reduced memory footprint, uh, native images are really small, easy learning curve, uh, vers versatile independence injection. That's really uh, Another interesting topic because dependency injection in uh, Micronaft happens in compile time. And uh, this is really interesting. Um, and building support for reactive programming, serverless, cloud native apps, uh, et cetera. Uh, from downsides, we have the same younger and small ecosystem uh, and small community, like 100 times uh, less than Spring Boot on stack overflow, for example. Um, so let me uh, open my IntelliJ idea and we will try to write some small microservice using uh, uh, Micronaut. Um, first of all, there is such a thing like Micronaut launch uh, where we can uh, include everything we need from a microservice, uh, including different uh, additional libraries, integrations, etc. There are tons of them, uh, for example, like Postgres uh, drivers. Uh, languages, uh, so nothing new, really looks like a regular Spring initializer. Uh, we generate the project, download the regular zip, and I have already opened uh, one of them to make things faster. Yep, like this. So as a result, we have all the necessary dependencies uh, we need for development. Uh, of course, we can change it. And uh, uh, small readme with uh, all the documentation available. Configuration uh, happens as usual. Uh, 
regular YAML file or application.properties if I uh, uh, hadn't chosen the YAML dependency uh, while generating the project, uh, etc. So uh, the project really looks like a Spring Boot uh, application or anything like that, but it really has all the uh, benefits of using uh, of generating the native image uh, and uh, of the modern Java frameworks, because Spring can be considered to be uh, old at, at this point uh, or old-fashioned, uh, just not uh, not to, not to be provocative uh, and uh, you would start throwing the tomatoes at me. Um, so let's just start with something simple and. Uh, uh what everything would do in the first place like write some simple controller really uh, the same uh, controller annotation uh maybe yep uh, slightly different annotations but uh uh <laughs> copilot helps me at this point um by default, any methods uh, returns application JSON. So we can uh, I'll let it be application JSON. Uh, okay. So any additional configuration? No, I don't think so. Uh, let's try to build this. Um, even run. So it's up and running. Uh, you can, can take a look at this. That it works. Um, let's stop this and make something interesting. Um, let's create a service. Uh, I would like to show you how the dependency injection works in Micronaft. Instead of uh, conventional and uh, uh, really uh, conventional annotation bin or component, etc. service. Uh, we have a singleton, which is uh, from Jakarta specification. And uh, let's make it return something like, like string. Let it be, let it be string. In Micronaut, injection happens uh, in, uh, as I said, at compile time. And the conventional and usual way you would, uh, you would love to inject your dependencies is through constructor uh, with no additional. There's no additional annotations. Oh, let's run it. Minus T, as I said, it uh, forces the Gradle to recompile the files before running it. Yep, uh, it's ready to go. And it works. Um, so, uh, also, really interesting thing about Micronaut that uh, um, we can use uh, compilation time configuration injection. And uh, let's name it configuration. Let's start to recompile on something. Uh, configuration properties. And for example, let's split it and call something like 
uh, yeah, that's, that's for, 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 for my trainings. Uh, let it be this. It's just up prefix, and we would like to pass the just the up. And uh, we would need to uh, to write the getter for each next level of uh, of this tree, and uh, let's write it. The string. Uh, also. I did a mistake, but uh, it must be an interface. What uh, Micronaut really does for us, uh, it creates the implementation of uh, interface uh, with a postfix called uh, uh, introspec introspection, if I'm not mistaken. We will see it uh, after the compilation. And uh, it would be just out of the box logic for configuration injection like that. Get prefix. Yep, it's ready. And we can just uh, uh, make the service. Oh, let's inject the configuration. Um, it's enough to just get the prefix. Yep, get message. Uh, looks like it should work. Now, hopefully, we will see the message hello from Micronaut instead of hello world. Um, It wasn't stopped. Yep, it's up and ready. Uh, yep, it's and it's a call from Micronaut. Uh, let's take a look at uh, at build file uh, classes. Now you can see that configuration uh, intercepted. Yeah, intercepted. It has its own implementation of the uh, of a configuration um, configuration interface. Uh, so really handy. I believe every developer would find uh, it useful in everyday work uh, because usually configuration files and configuration. Uh, uh, like parsing YAML to configuration classes, it's a boilerplate code uh, which can be reduced, uh, obviously. Um, also, yeah, uh, what is the microservice which don't return, which doesn't return the uh, some DTO object, for example? Let's call it message. Uh, Just message for now. I'm not using Lambook here, but to make it simple, but let's imagine this one. Um, and what we want to do is make up a service. Uh, maybe, uh, yep, service return another string, but the new message.
and now uh, it must fail, really. Well, um, cannot find this about configuration. <laughs> fail, but not because of that exception. Um, service injected and then executed. Uh, let me rerun as a whole thing. Yep, it's up. And it it fails because of uh, the serialization attempt. And uh, another really nice thing about Micronaft, it, uh, it gives you out of the box uh, really handy serializers for, for any type of uh, objects. And uh, to make the Micronaft use it and apply one for our, uh, for our object, we need to uh, drop the servable uh, annotation on the message. Um, and uh, like this. Let's run it. Yep. Now it's a plain JSON, uh, deserialized uh, message object. Um, yep. I hope we have some time. Yeah. I also would like to show you. Um, uh, the unit testing using Micronaft because that's one of the key features uh, which was mentioned on a key features page of Micronaut. Um, let's even use this demo project test. As you can see, there is a really similar annotation as in Spring Boot, it's called Micronaut test and uh, uh, we are using inject annotation for dependency injection in this case, and uh, uh, like declaring the test, uh, this Micronaut test, uh, it really implies that we would like to have our application up and running for this test. And uh, it also includes the application context. Uh, right uh, from this point, we can, for example, inject the uh, out of the box, HTTP client. Yep. Uh, usually, HTTP clients also need to know this what uh, path we are working at the moment, and to. Uh, Let's make it blocking. Okay, uh, but we have client, we have our application up and running for, for the testing purposes. And uh, now we would like to test whether our uh, controller endpoint will actually return the um, uh, hello Micronaft message. And it means that we need uh, of course, yeah, retrieve uh, from our um, root endpoint, a string, uh, response, yep, and just assert equals. So it will look like, yeah, like this, exactly. Message, yeah, let's run it. Yep, exactly, uh, really quick. Check. 
the same test. As you remember, we are injecting this field. So it must fail. Yeah, it fails. So really fast, fast and fury, uh, micronaut. Uh, and uh, for the ending, you remember me telling about native image support for most of the mentioned frameworks. And it means that uh, we can turn this application, uh, this microservice in something really, really small, which can be, can be deployed uh, everywhere. Uh, for these purposes, we really need uh, GraalVM on other machine uh, just to build the uh, image. The most convenient way of uh, retrieving the GraalVM is uh, as the command is for me. Um, let's just list Java. And GraalVM is distributed as a part of a uh, Java package. So we can, uh, for example, we can install any kind of uh, these Javas. And the only thing we would need to do is just to uh, use it. So we are using Java 21 at the moment, uh, as you can see. Uh, after that, we need to, using this Java, uh, let's enter the the folder, as you can see, we are in a project. Um, and just as plain as it is, run Gradle native compile. With a Spring Boot, you would need to do a lot of dancing with uh, musical instruments uh, to make it happen. It can take some time, usually just a minute, uh, but uh, as a result, we have native image. Let's let it happen. Yeah, they are almost there. <laughs> I promise you, it's worth it. It's worth waiting. Uh, let's remind you the started startup time of uh, the regular project. Um, don't have a history here. We will run it another time. It's under the load. We need those numbers just to compare uh, the native image execution and uh, time to start up and uh, with a plain, plain run from Gradle, which usually happens on, uh, on CI, right? So we have our native image compiled. Uh, it's placed under native, native compiled in a build. Uh, 
package native native compiled. So it's just uh, sixty six megabytes for dependency injection, uh, restful service configuration, etc. Uh, Spring Boot image in in best case scenario would be uh, two hundred megabytes, and we can just run it. Uh, let's stop it. Run another time without the load, and it shows yes yeah, three hundred almost four hundred. Okay, four hundred. Start time. Start up time is just twenty six milliseconds for a start. Or fully. Uh, fully, fully performing the microservice, as you can see. As for me, it's just really uh, enormous, really uh, magnificent numbers. Uh, Spring Boot wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Um, so, this native image can be delivered anywhere you want, Docker, serverless, etc. You will pay less for uh, for your billing in cloud, any type of cloud, and um, and it will perform well, really. Um, I didn't have time to perform any tests and metrics on my own, but uh, I found really interesting uh, comparison, uh, different operations uh, with uh, three Micronaft, Quarkus and Spring Cloud. And it shows uh, that in general, Micronaut uh, is slower and any, uh, any kind of new frameworks, yeah, they are slower in compilation time because again, ahead of time compilation, you remember that uh, it takes some time, but uh, when we are speaking about performance in a runtime, uh, it's just tremendous difference between them. Uh, you can see everything on your own, uh, we are running out of time. I also I will drop the presentation afterwards. Um, and uh, let's let's proceed to the summary. Uh, so we we looked through three different frameworks, three different approaches. As for me, uh, Spring Boot, Helidon, Quarkus, Micronaut. And uh, speaking about Spring Boot, right? Uh, it really best suits for you if you are looking for a framework, uh, enterprise grade, as it's called, rich on features. Um, community support, et cetera. Uh, really a huge ecosystem of uh, libraries, uh, but it really can, uh, as a drawback, you will have a performance overhead, complexity, higher memory usage, but uh, it's not always the case that you need to uh, uh, write from the top performance from a framework. Uh, speaking about Helidon, it's more lightweight, it's high performance, uh, and uh, it supports reactive and uh, uh, reactive programming, and uh, it also implements micro profile. And uh, as for me, if you are looking for something reactive, Helidon is the best uh, is the best uh, framework you can use. Uh, all the uh, benefits of uh, next generation frameworks right? like GraalVM, native image support, uh, etc. As a drawback, the same smaller ecosystem, complexity of reactive programming, and uh, uh, not a huge number of features. Uh, Quarkus is more about cloud native and serverless. Uh, uh, the guys from uh, the, who developed Quarkus really thought about it as an uh, cloud native and uh, high performance framework. Uh, yeah, uh, it is considered to be really fast in development 
and uh, it's it optimized for Kubernetes. Uh, I have features like live coding, uh, native compilation, and uh, the same Dropbox. Like uh, it's a new framework. Uh, if something occur, if uh, you face uh, some strange error, mostly most likely that you will uh, need to deal with it on your own. Uh, not really huge community on uh, Stack Overflow and anything like that. And Micronaft, uh, it's really fast in startup time, as you said. Uh, low memory usage uh, supports cloud native, and it's a best choice if you are looking for something high performant, high performant, with a more uh, conservative approach for development, like uh, uh, like MVC or uh, model view controller. I mean, uh, paradigm like uh, object oriented programming. Uh, but again, it's it's new and uh, uh, it's like uh, slowly evolving, but it's really promising framework. Um, here is this all from my side. Really, thank you for listening, me guys. Uh, I really would like to hear your thoughts if you have any commercial experience with any of these frameworks. Uh, uh, even with Spring Spring Boot, if you did make it fast, just let me know. Uh, it would be nice to hear that. Uh, and thank you. Thank you uh, for being here. Thank you, Mikhailo. Thank you very much for interesting presentation. We do have uh, some questions in our chat. So uh, if uh, you may, I will read you out the first one. Is your team using Micronaut framework on the project? No, um, not my team, um, but one of my colleagues are using Micronaut and he's really uh, uh, happy uh, to describe his experience uh, usually and uh, he saw no difficulties of using it. Okay, so the second one is, uh, how about integration with the other frameworks? Can you please talk about any ORM integration instead of uh, JDBC? Oh, um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Marcus supports uh, Hibernate and most of the modern frameworks uh, have out of the box support or community support with some uh, third party integrations. Uh, I didn't really work with any of that, but uh, I saw it on pages and uh, I'm sure someone already did something in that direction. Okay, and with the next question, I may need your help. Uh, so uh, can you please talk about your experience? And if you can check that comment, please. Uh, so the person, the Ivan Vilamov is asking which, uh, what should he use, which framework uh, he use, only native compilation or something more? Okay, about native compilation, it's a really interesting question. Uh, mostly native compilation really suits for new projects and something uh, which been in development uh, not for so long, uh, because usually migrating to native compilation, it's more complicated uh, this time. And uh, uh, personally, you should avoid it. Uh, you would spend a tremendous amount of uh, engineer time for migration. Uh, so it's better to start right away. Um, and to... Uh, yeah, about your technologies. Uh, I am afraid I didn't really work with, uh, like in commercial, uh, with uh, with any of those, and uh, maybe should uh, look for help uh, from other engineers in this call. Okay, shall we move to the next one? Yeah. Uh, starting, time, starting time is really exciting, but what about the difference during workload? Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a slide on, uh, about this. Uh, 
um, if we are comparing requests per second, yeah, and with different uh, Java parameters, uh, yeah, I'm afraid this, uh, this table doesn't have the comparison uh, with the spring, but uh, uh, we can really see the correlation of resource usage. So the lower the resource usage is, the more request can be uh, processed uh, per one item of, uh, for example, core per CPU. So I believe we will see better numbers there as well. So Maxim is also assuming yeah. that uh, Micronaut is even supporting reactive hibernate. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, Sprint boot doesn't support uh, Hibernate, reactive Hibernate. Yep, you're, you're absolutely right. It supports uh, reactive Hibernate. So we can even optimize the request to the database, make it reactive, make it as fast as possible. So I didn't know that really, it's a nice point. But anyway, uh, we, we, we uh, can, can I just add uh, one comment? We don't see a uh, su super change, uh, super difference. I mean, uh, uh, 79,000 uh, and 75, not in two times in, in I mean, uh, I mean, starting time is very exciting. I don't know what compare in 100 uh, times quicker, yeah? Or more, yeah. 1,000 uh, times quicker. Yeah. But actually during the workload, it's quite the same things. Uh, yeah, comparing to Quarkus, yeah, you're right. Because um, they are trying to be, that's a competitors really. Uh, Micronaut and Marcus and Halidon. Um, but I'm sure comparing Micronaut with, for example, as Spring Framework, we can see a really huge difference, 200 in memory consumption and uh, like tremendous three seconds uh, in startup time. Uh, not even three, but in, in dev mode, it's like more than twice. Uh, so yeah. We should compare it to uh, similar frameworks uh, and Spring, of course. I suppose that we have uh, in Java, yeah, in Java Virtual Machine, we have several level of optimization. And uh, if we have very hot uh, uh, virtual machine, I suppose we will see the same uh, results. Mm. It's my it's my assumption. I'm not sure for one hundred percent. I mean, framework, right? yeah, yeah. I I mean, here we uh, when we start, for instance, Quarkus or Mercanaft, yeah, we have uh, pre-compiled, yeah, pre-compiled uh, uh, solution. But in just when we start uh, Java, virtual Java virtual machine, yeah, it needs to uh, to uh, to warm. Yeah, to to warm. After a while, we will see uh, better better result, better um, and more optimized uh, um, implement um, execution. Yeah, it, it's just yeah. my exactly. assumption. But in case microservice, it's more important to quick start because we just need to replace one microservice to another. Yeah, and it's it's very important. Yeah, scale up, scale down. Yes. Yeah. 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 As, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're thank right. You. Very in uh, inter interesting topic. Thank you for yes, yeah, thank you presentation. Talking about this table, I also noticed that numbers really uh, tells us the startup time for Micronaut being run not from a native image. Uh, talking about native image here, yeah, uh, it would be completely different. Uh, not Halidon, but Quarkus uh, showed that using native image, right? Uh, that would be more appropriate. Um, 
so my personal opinion that it really worth using uh, Quarkus, Micronaut, uh, Halidon, any kind of new generation frameworks. It's really worth it only if you are using native images. Uh, because as uh, Maxim said, that uh, the same Spring Boot can be optimized uh, to be more lightweight, uh, etc. But uh, uh, comparing to native images, that's a diff completely different story. Yeah. Have you guys worked with native images? Do you have any experience in production? Because that's a rel uh, relatively new stories, uh, new, new features. And uh, in production, it's uh, occurs re really uh, not, not so often. Oh, it's look, it's not then. Look, looks like no one. Yeah, <laughs> I work. I I oh. work with it on the production in the real. Oh, really? I know that it, they're using yeah. They was writing the application mobile. And yeah, backend on was on Quarkus, but for local development we used Open JDK. But for production, yeah, it was built on native image. Oh. But I didn't touch it, so I don't know any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that was really nice to hear. Did you uh, any difficulties, uh, especially for example, you are developing something which is supposed to be built in future for a native image, and uh, like your feature really breaking the native image, uh, which would compile on uh, in regular jar. For example, mm, because from no, developer no. perspective, it can be more difficult uh, to work with native images. Uh, no, I didn't see any differences between them for real. Uh, what we developed uh, uh, development uh, on OpenJDK that works on native image. Yeah, we yeah, didn't really see any problems. Glad, with it. glad to hear that. Uh, okay, guys. Any other questions? Um, there is a link in the chat. Ivan is asking, have you seen it? Joby. Uh, looks like another framework, right? Uh, in chat comparison. Oh, I didn't really. Uh, can you share? Share? Yeah. Benchmarks. It's example of JSON's realization, but it looks like Juby is on top of a lot of other frameworks. There are a lot of other frameworks from Chinese. Um, yeah, and it looks like it's a mess about micro frameworks. A lot of a lot of new frameworks. Mm, in Java world. Okay, yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. Even more, uh, there are frameworks, uh, commercial frameworks, for example, from Netflix. I, I, I'm sure they developed something unbelievably fast, uh, which they cannot share. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Appreciate. Uh, I will learn something new from your your speech. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have thank any you. other questions? So, Mikhailo, thank you very very much for such interesting presentation. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We will be very happy to see you in our next events. Also, after this event, you will uh, receive a feedback form. Please share your opinion. Your opinion matters for us. So have a nice day. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.